things up. Yeah. And this is for your efforts. Now, don't offend me by trying to turn it down. Just take it. An honest fight deserves an honest reward. If that were more common practice in this world, I think life would be so much better. It is done. Awesome. We'll talk tomorrow. I still need to clean this mess up. We sure showed them what's what. And what not. Alright. So there's... So much stuff. Follow me. Run and about. See if we can open this chest. I failed. Ah. I'm sorry. Can we open this one? There we go. It's personal stash. I could have just clicked to collect all. What is this? Guide for Travelers, Hunters, and Explorers of the River Kingdoms, Volume 5, Monsters and Beasts, with a wisp. An amusing glowing ball which looks harmless and doesn't arouse any natural suspicion. Pretends to be a guiding light in the marshes, but leads travelers to certain death. The agonizing fear of their victims is the monster's nourishing dinner. If you manage to resist their tricks, make sure you have some electric protection. The monster electrocutes any visitors that fails to lure into terror. Werewolves prefer to hunt in groups and attack lone travelers. It's entirely possible that a uh, Varusian camp or troop could turn into a pack of bloodthirsty lycanthropes under cover of darkness. Ordinary weapons stand little chance against them, but a silver blade greatly increases chances of survival. And primals are powerful creatures from the primal realm. Occasionally visit the world for amusement. It's best to stay out of primals' ways. Don't fight it. It's extremely dangerous. But if it's a but if a life is at stake, resort to cold steel. It's good to know, because we will get wrecked by a will-o'-wisp later in the game. That is where I eventually <laughs> stopped playing the game. I was also playing it, like, right when it came out, so it's still really buggy. But I heard this game is a lot better now. You wake up from a nasty dream that tortured you almost all night long. In it, you saw a wall of unnaturally thick fog that surrounded you, slowly moving closer and closer. A quick look out the window, and you find that the fog was not a figment of your imagination. Not a dream. And then... Hear me. Please hear me. Can you hear me? Please. It seems that only you can see or hear the nymph. Who are you? Who am I? Just a tear shed by the land itself, the bitter sigh of nature. I am a nymph, the guardian of this area, a defeated guardian. Call me the guardian of the bloom, if you wish. What do you want from me? Aid, salvation. We have a common enemy, and long have I searched for someone who can defeat him. The one you call the Staglord. As a storm strikes ruthlessly with gusts and lightning, the Staglord wreaks havoc with the swords of his servants. And not just in the world of people. The land also suffers from the evil he brings. My forests and my flowers suffocate in this fog. Soon even I will vanish as the last ray of light fades at dusk. The Stag Lord is responsible for the fog? Yes. It hides his fortress as well as his dark deeds. But while responsible, he did not create this affliction. It is the work of a powerful druid, who has betrayed even himself. I know not why the powers did not leave this renegade, but even I was unable to defeat him. How can I help you? This fog, it enshrouds, entangles, suffocates. If only I could learn how it was created, but my powers wane. I have barely the strength to call out to you. 
All I know for certain is that somewhere in this forest lies an old house, and it echoes with the remnants of a strange power. The Stag Lord and his druid were there. The fog hides this place from me, but I can point you to the bandits' camp near the Thornford. Make them tell you where this place is. Go there and listen to the echo. Catch the whispers. Search for anything that can tell you how the fog was created. Once the fog clears, nature will breathe again. And you will be able to easily find your way to the fortress of our mutual enemy. And we'll just do this one. I'm glad my adventure begins with such a beautiful sight. Beauty is so tender. It can so easily be crushed under the blows of cruel fate. But you can save it from being undone. All right. I understand. Farewell. I don't believe in fate, stranger. But our meeting seems more than a coincidence. The nymph's whisper fades as she disappears. And what do you think? Trustworthy or untrustworthy? Okay. So we could sit around and talk to all of our companions now. And like they'll all have different stories to tell you. Um, but I think for the, the sake of brevity, I'd rather just, like, continue playing the game. Because there's, like, there's a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the nymph, super trustworthy. <laughs> Definitely nothing weird there. Um... For the sake of just like getting to the meat of the game and some of the combat, like I'd, stopping now. I'd rather skip talking to absolutely everyone. There's so many cool stories here though, so if you ever want to hear any of the stories of any of these characters, just let me know. I'll have plenty of opportunities to do so, but for now I just like, I really want to play the game and get to the combat. And... Greetings! You certainly roughed those villains, ruffled those villains, feathers. Well, anyway, new day, new troubles. Have you seen the fog? Never seen anything like it before. Don't know why my voice is like this now. The road to Restov looks something like spilled milk. It just hung in the air. I couldn't see anything through that soup. Not even with the torch. Feels like witchcraft to me. I bet the Stag Lord's involved somehow. Rumors say he deals with all kinds of bad magic. Uh, just show me your wares, old log. Nothing too good for such a good person. All right, old log. I forgot to look to see if... Uh, Harem could use a breastplate. I think he can. I think I already have a composite longbow. But I'll see if I can hand it to Amiri. I'm sure I'll loot many composite longbows along the way. Deal. I'm at, okay. I'm a little bit of a ways away from full plate. All right, uh, let's look at you, Harem. Chainmail? Oh yeah, jeez. Oh wait, six armor, six armor, okay. Minus 4 armor check, minus 5 armor check, 30 arcane, 25 arcane, 3 max dex, 2 max dex. I think a breastplate's just better, right? It has less armor check penalty, less arcane spell failure chance. Provides the same amount of armor class. Um, remember I tried to take this away from her? Because technically Amiri does better if you just let her use a, uh, a two-handed weapon instead of this oversized sword. Because it's so oversized, it gives her a minus two attack, but... Like, it's it's her special sword. You gotta let her use it. It's the thought process beyond, behind just letting her hold on to it, I guess. Okay. Um... 
I remember it's always good to have some alchemist fire and acid on you in this game. I don't think it's super important yet. But I know that it's important. I'm gonna get, I think maybe five more alchemist fire. And we'll get uh, five more acid. Because you could run into trolls, I'm pretty sure. If you don't have acid or alchemist fire, they just heal and everything's awful. Onwards. Okay. Yeah, okay. So cleave is auto on. So we got a couple things. We gotta go find out what Tartusio's up to. I guess I'll collect it all. Ah, uh, I should. Okay. And after finding out what Tartusio's up to, we have to go deal with the Stag Lord and the Fog. And so right now. Our goal is to like go over here to Thornford, and I think that's the one thing we have. So, start heading down the map this way. We could choose to split directions. I think I'm gonna keep going south. Random encounter. Yes, good for swarms too, thank you. I remembered there was something else that really needed them, and swarms are really nasty. A jittery old man in squalid clothing shuffles up to you. His gray hair is unkempt, and he continually clenches and unclenches his wrinkled, freckled hands. When he stops and looks up at you, his eyes widen and he tugs at his beard. Remus. Strange weather. Invisible fog creeping out of the woods. Soars beyond the sky, obscures the sun and moon. Strange. The old man shakes his head, his eyes shifting about seemingly at random. Well, I don't like this old man. Looks like the kind who of cast the evil eye. Who are you? The old man freezes for a moment. Remus, but that won't help with the fog. What are you doing here? I do nothing. Breathe, walk, observe. The fog looks visible enough to me. I see more than ever. I never seen so much before. The old man wipes his hand across his face and sighs wearily. But someone must look and no one else can. Visible fog? Does that mean you could find your way through it? The fog is... wrong. It hinders your legs, not your sight. I wish not to try. Uh, I should probably go. The old man stares at you intently. You hasten. You should. Your rival wastes no time. He races, but in another direction. He searches for power. He'll find it. My rival? Do you mean Tartusio? The old man tugs at his beard again. He's not tall, but he wants to climb high. Besides him are those who could stand against him, and might yet still. What power is he searching for? Someone else's, old but forever young. That which was taken from another. That which gave joy, and now gives death. Uh, can you just tell me where he is now? He's in an old tomb, south of the trading post. You actually said something that made sense. And the old man shrugs. When I see clearly, I speak clearly. And why is it that and why is it you see that so clearly? The old man's face is blank. I slept there last night. I noticed him as I left. How do you know we're rivals? I don't know. I see. You could choose where to set your eyes, usually. But you could choose what they see. All the more reason not to linger. Farewell. The old man turns and walks away slowly, muttering softly. Once stolen, the land should be reclaimed. Once reclaimed, bound with the claimer shall it be. Bound, merged, joined by unbreakable ties. Claiming the land, claiming its pain, claiming its death. Alright. So now we have a new place to go. Which is the ancient tomb. March on. Which is where we'll go, because we want to stop Tartusio. So that's over here. And it seems to be fairly close to the Thorn Fjord, so. Seems like it should take us there. Ooh, random encounter. 
see what it is. Some bandits? A bandit necromancer. Alright, Lindsay goes first. Just shoot it. Not bad. Alright, then just stand there. Oh, not cause fear. No. No. Just waddle to the edge of the map, tusks. Alright. Oh, we missed. I forgot to rage. That's fine. I'm trying to save my resources, is honestly what it is. So I don't think this fight should be very tough. Your life is low. Well, we've got tougher fights coming up. Alright, round two. Take a shot. That's good. Ooh, we saved. Ah, oh, did Tusk save? Ah, oh, I can't. Cost it like that. We will full move all the way back over here. Got it. That's your turn. Uh, we probably don't need to rage. Nah. Didn't need to rage. Okay. Not bad. You okay there, Tusks? Still got a... It is done. There we go. Had that condition on him. Alright. Alright. Enter the ancient tomb. Ooh, lots of goods. What is this? Protection from chaos and summon monster one. Not bad. No stopping now. A gnome in gaudy purple garb seizes your attention. Of course, the scoundrel Tartusio, who you know from your time in Restov. The vile gnome is standing on a small hill, expressing his discontent in every way he can muster. Let me guess, you're still dawdling. <laughs> Should I make some tea in the meantime? Bake a pie, perhaps? Plant a small garden and harvest some cherries? Perhaps you'd be more comfortable wearing fool's caps and colored trousers. Then at least I'd be able to sell tickets. Come one, come all! Feast your eyes upon the slowest and the most ridiculous buffoons in Dolorian! So, Tartuccio, I may serve you, but I am no one's slave. We do what we can, but it is no simple feat to find an unknown object in a masked dungeon. Hold your tongue, gnome! I can hardly tell your twaddle from the buzzing of a fly! Quickly now! If we don't find that artifact soon, someone else might seize it. Someone who's standing over there watching you right now, you fools! Tatusia turns his angry gaze upon you. He nods to his guards to draw their weapons. Uh, so I could try Valerie. I would say you and your sword could find greater glory than in service to Tartusio. He summoned you to fight the Stag Lord's bandits and now uses you for more questionable dealings. You're right. Tartuccio has deceived us. A warrior who bows to a lie, who humiliates herself. There is no glory in this. I shall aid this scoundrel no more. I see my magnificent rival will stop at nothing, even at stealing the servants of his enemy. Let us see if your fools are even more useless than mine. Draw your swords and cover my retreat. All right. Yeah! And we're battle ready. All right, Lindsay goes first. Inspire courage and uh, I guess move for cover for now. Alright. Oh. Enlarged. Let's get it. Got it. Enlarged no more. 
Alright, Amiri, is there anything in range of your charge? Oh, there's that mercenary. Yeah, let's go get it. Oh, I forgot the ridge! Nah. Oh, yes. We ain't got crit. Oh, is it? Oh, Tartusia disappeared. <laughs> oh, this one came all the way up to Aram. What does this do? Touch of Chaos. Melee touch attack. For the next round, anytime the target rolls a d20, they must roll twice. Oh, it gives them disadvantage, essentially. Yeah. Oh, that provokes an attack of opportunity. Sometimes I forget things. Ah, start laughing. Perfect. Excellent. <laughs> A fella is just like, nope. <laughs> Enough spell for you. All right. Not bad. You're raging. Got it. All right. Valerie is doing her own thing. Like the turn-based mod, this one doesn't seem great at the cutscene aspect of fights. Yeah, it's true. Fights are less cutscene-esque. They go a lot slower, but, like, at least for me, it's a lot easier to follow. Um, i just go ahead and skip Lindsay. Oh. Get as close as you can. Oh. Get him! Got him. Alright. Follow me. Yeah. But like I have to say the first couple times that I played this, I never even noticed uh Tartusio leaving the fight. Like, I imagined he just ran off. I didn't notice that he teleported out or anything like that. At least for me, it helps me, like, see everything that happens, even if it is a little less cinematic. I'm also someone who's a fan of, like, a lot of the micro control. The image carved on the stone is almost completely worn away over the age. One can still distinguish a sickle sword and a skull with a single eye socket covered with a coin. Judging by the outline, this base relief once depicted the sun and moon. It's now almost completely eroded. On closer inspection, one could discern the outline of a head with a single eye. Onwards. Oh. Okay. What's that? Oh. About to check. Whoa. Is this not a trap? Oh, it's not a trap. My search was not in vain. Alright. Take a look at it. Ancient Cyclops coin. Check that out. Oh. Could have disarmed that. Else. What's this say? Base relief for the sun, long eroded. The vague outlines of four strange creatures have been carved over it. No stopping now. Like I. It always seemed like there was a puzzle in this room. 
Like, just with all the descriptions. And it seemed like you were supposed to, like, put the Cyclops coin in here. But it doesn't give you the option to do it. So I guess it's just, like, background. Just lore. Or maybe I'm missing something. I'm listening. Oh, I missed one. How sweet. The first breath of fresh air after the stale, damp stiffness of that tomb. Before us stretched an unending heath, replete with hills and gullies and patches of low shrubs. Already, the trail of Tartusio and his companions had gone cold. But we could not give up so easily. Whether the trail went cold or not, it was one we had to follow. We succeeded. No blade of grass was bent. It must have been enough time to straighten back up since whoever less passed through. But the heath's dry earth preserved the prints of little shoes. Our eyes to the ground, we followed the trail. We walked and walked until finally we came to a huge gully, the dried up bed of river of yore. But what is this? At the edge, the grass was trampled down, and the soil turned up, and claw prints, lots of them. We'd stumbled upon a fresh battlefield. And here the trail split. One set of footprints walked away from the battle and down into the gully. The brave footprints that faced down their enemies followed the path along its edge. Let's try a nature check. We tried to imagine who or what left those claw marks. We failed. Unfortunately, we could not determine who attacked Tartusio and his companions. However, we could discern that there were plenty of attackers, and they were rather small. Uh, detect magic. We tried to find any traces of magic in the surroundings. We discovered traces of a spell, apparently from the Illusion School of Magic, near where the Lonely Trail descended into the Goalie. So we carefully studied the trail that led down to the Goalie, we examined the path that snaked along the Goalie, we stood a while and thought, then followed the single set of footprints down. I think we carefully studied. To our despite, we discovered that the little shoe prints turned into little clawed footprints on their way to the Goalie, as if someone from Tartusia's band was wearing shoes and either took them off or grew claws, then jumped into the gully to avoid battle. Alright. We follow the single set of footprints down into the gully. The way down was steep, and it took some time to reach the bottom. Walking on the loose soil was difficult, but the clawed footsteps were easy to spot. The bottom of the gully went downhill, deeper and deeper. Finally, the footprints turned, whirled up the steep slope, and disappeared at the gully's edge. We couldn't but admire the animal agility and clever claws of the creature we were following. The slope before us was as tall as two men, as two tall men, and ended at a hanging crest. Climbing such a slope would be no easier than climbing a sheer wall. However, a long, steady-looking root stuck out from stuck out of the ground from the top. Make a mobility check. There was one brave hero among us who decided to try his luck and climb the root. We're going to choose Lindsay, because she has 10 mobility. So she needs to roll a 1. <laughs> After tugging on the root, Lindsay took a deep breath, grabbed it with both hands, and began the difficult ascent. Pushing with her feet against the slope and grabbing the root with both hands, she climbed higher and higher. Only her heavy breathing and the faint creaking of the root broke the deadly silence. Suddenly, dust poured down from the top of the slope, and the root began to slide from the ground. Keeping her wits, Lindsay shifted her weight to her legs and froze. After a tense moment, she continued her journey and soon reached the top of the slope. After catching her breath, she lay on the ground and offered her hand to help the next of us up. After climbing out of the gully one by one, we easily found the clawed footprints again and moved forward. The air grew tense. We sensed that we were approaching our target. And our inten intuition proved correct. All right. 